Hello, this is Billy Tarasio with Modern Law Practice, and today we're going to talk about breaking up. Um, professional breakups, they happen all the time. We're, we are in relationships with all sorts of people that change over time, and these do not have to be romantic relationships. They can be relationships with a business partner or employees or um, uh, groups that you may be a part of. Uh, BNI groups or other sort of trade organizations. Um, and there is a right and a wrong way to do this. Um, one of the best examples that I can think of um, was a text that I got from um, my hairdresser in 2014. And it's so good that I want to read it to you. And it says this, it's been my pleasure servicing you. So I'm very sorry to say that I'm not going to be able to keep our future appointments. I know this seems sudden, but I put an extraordinary amount of thought into my future and the well-being of my family, and I have made the decision to resign from working behind the chair as a hairstylist. This has not been an easy decision. However, I feel strongly this is what's best for me at this point in my life. I'm going to miss sharing our lives together. I hope to keep in touch. Best wishes. And then her name. So... I know this person really well. You get to know your hairdresser really well. And um, even though, because you spend a lot of time with them, you know, over, over a period of years, and when you have hair like mine, like you can't go to a whole lot of people. So um, it felt like a really awful breakup anonymous text. And I knew that, um, that I shouldn't take this personally, that this went to a whole lot of people, but I couldn't help but feeling like, isn't our relationship worth more than a generic group breakup text. And over time, especially every time I would go get my hair cut with somebody else, I would feel like a pain of being dumped by my hairdresser um, and friend. And, and me as a business owner just wanted to tell her like, oh, there's such a better way for you to do this. Like we all want to support you. And that's the bottom line. Like when relationships are changing, they're changing because for one or both people, they're no longer working as they should. And this happens all the time in the employment, in the employee employer context. All the time things change. And it doesn't always have to be personal. It could be that the attorney that is working for you, um, changes are happening in their life that dictate that they want to go in a different direction. Or you as an employer are, you've changed your expectations. And this will happen a lot with law firms that we're working with. We'll say, hey, you need to step up your expectations. Here's what we're requiring of our employees now. And those, it could be that the employees are not meeting those expectations. And so you have to let them know that they're not meeting the expectations. It can be really, really challenging. And then you've got clients. We're, we're always needing to break up with clients. And most of us wait longer than we should wait to break up with clients. When you've got an unhealthy relationship, meaning things are not going well, there's animosity or there's things that are unsaid um, or there's things that are really bothering one person or the other person, the best thing you can possibly do is talk about it and take time to try to first take a step back and whatever emotions you're feeling, like I was feeling um, really hurt by my hairdresser and rejected and hurt and rejected are bad feelings, right? And anytime that, that we might um, have somebody tell us, I don't want to spend time with you anymore. It's a real rejection. And that can absolutely happen um, in all sorts of organizations. So when you're experiencing that rejection, you're hurt, you're angry, you're upset, you want to lash out, I want you to take a step back from that and think bigger picture, think bigger, okay, what's going on here? How can I look at this from the other person's perspective? Maybe they've changed their plans or their needs have changed. And how can I maintain the best possible, possible relationship I can? Um, because all of us need friends. All of us want to increase our network and things change. I've had employees leave and then come back. And the only reason that that's been able to work is because we've left the door wide open and I've stepped outside my hurt and my rejection to be able to support them as they try something else in their life. Now, back to my hairdresser, she has come back. She cuts my hair again. She reached out. She was like, 
you know, you're one of the few people I want to work with. I'm like, well, I want you back too, because this is really about the hair. And most of our professional relationships, yes, they're personal, but it's really about the professional relationship. It's really more about, okay, I'm in this trade organization because I have great relationships there, or I'm getting great feedback or content. I was part of a lawyer group, um, with a lot of lawyers and the leader of this group was very, very involved. He was a practicing attorney. He had a ton of experience and he was a real mentor to me. He gave me amazing information, but part of this group I was in, I, I joined a smaller group of attorneys and we got very, very tight and we spent a whole lot of time talking to each other and the other people in the group were no longer really adding to our value. So some of us made the decision to leave the group, which was a membership organization where we were paying membership dues and the leader who we all of us had had a good relationship with and who had looked up to and who was a leader in the industry felt rejected and I know that because he took it very very personally he no longer wanted to talk to us because we weren't in his organization and maybe it was that we just needed a break like it didn't have to be that way I probably would have gone on to pay him a whole lot more money over time if he had been more graceful in the breakup so one of my favorite books, Radical Candor. Read it, own it, love it. This takes a lot of emotional maturity to be able to kind of step outside yourself and realize that these relationships are bigger than the moment you're in. Um, but I promise you, they're worth taking the time to handle as gracefully and as maturely as you possibly can. So if you want to talk specifics, hit me up. We'll talk about it more and make sure to subscribe. Thanks.